I used to be a theory person, but uh, today, uh, in, in today's presentation, I, I will uh, bring the issue back into 1945, 1955, and then I will come back to, 19, uh, to 2016 as of today, because I will talk about what happened at, at the real early stage of European integration and what is going on in Northeast Asia. My focus is actually, uh, today my focus is Northeast Asia, China, Japan, and South Korea. Why those three countries? In total, they are more than one-fifth of global population, actually almost one-fourth. And more than one-fifth of global GDP, one-sixth of global trade, and the third largest economy in well, next to NAFTA EU. But actual cooperation among those countries or the, the level is quite low. I say ASEAN is pretty high, it's but, but small. So I call the, uh, this phenomenon, well, it's not, people call it an, an Asian paradox. Economic interdependence is getting deeper, trade and finance, but political co cooperation is lagging behind. Be careful, I'm not talking about political communities or, or a political union, it will not happen. But, and also be careful, I'm using the term regional cooperation in East Asia, not integration at this moment, because some, well, the situation is not that mature to talk about actual integration, but I, I will t target on, on the deeper integration. Why the epistemological gap perception in history, politics, is, is getting actually, it's just deep enough to cover economic and low politics agenda. And a lot of existing regional institutions, including APEC, ASEAN Plus Three, so many institutions, but they are in some sense deeply linked. So my focus today is what is a good thing and what new trade agreement, what monetary the agreement will bring new benefit, but I would rather talk about how to do it, what is needed, how to do it. I, I would talk about more kind of the engineering thing. Northeast Asia, there are a number of summits and a lots of quite quite a number of meetings. But once again, don't just look at the shape, look at the temperature. Temperature is not that hot. It's a little bit lukewarm. So how to make it hot? So and, and by the way, why do we need further regional cooperation in Northeast Asia? I, I would say first, yes, to enhance economic interdependence, political the other cooperation will be necessary, to even to increase the, the economic efficiency. And also, Northeast Asian regional cooperation can be a way of possible conflict resolution. So it's both economic and politics. And the same story goes to the European Union in between 1945 and 1955. European integration and East Asian integration, they are different. Similar or different, a lot of scholars were work on, on this topic. And my answer is Europe's past does not have to be the future of East Asia. So many uniqueness, so many the, uh, differences political type, historical animosity. However, however, a couple of, a set of universal elements can be drawn from the European case, especially not as of 2015, but as f f from the, uh, the experience of early integration years. So a couple of, everybody knows, the, some, some European myths, functional spillover. ECSC from a number of the, uh, the high politics the, uh, integration. Institutional institutionalism, sectoral interest, idea, interest, inst institution went together. But let's sing an old song one, one more time in a slightly different tone. So can we really distinguish low politics and high politics? And political obstacles really inevitable? And what are the real conditions, strategic conditions, to reach a deal-making, real deal-making in regional cooperation? And for that, I emphasize political engineering. And we have to look at the actor, especially the leader. Leadership is important. ECSC, we know that it is a stepping stone and spill over, major spill over starting point in John Monet Robert Schumann to father and mother of, of integration.
and it's also a peace building measure. We know, everybody knows, but slightly a different emphasis. I reread all the documents in, the, in this period. ECSC was the second best choice for France for the management of rule and czar. And ECSC was based on, on the earlier network of international steel cartel and international rule authority. And the most important thing is leadership network, not by one leader. It's, it's leadership network among Robert Sherman, Conrad Adenauer, Polony Pol Spock, as they did Gasperi. So these kind of political leaders, actually they took a political risk, not just opportunity, but they took a political risk. So they overcome a series of domestic political challenges, and that is a very essential part of regional cooperation. So speed over is not automatic. There were numbers of obstacles, numbers of failure cases, and what matters? Timing, historical luck. So, we need a deal making. How to make a good deal making in Northeast Asia? Bring the highest politics back in. Some, we are talking about building new institutions, TPP, AIIB, RCEP. We are talking about building institution and institution. But those institutions, well, of course we can do that, but we should empower those institutions with a closer leaders, communication, and, and network. And so there is, should be no founding father, but founding fathers always multiple. And the important thing is communication, politics of dialogue. China is talking about its one regional policy, one bit, one road. Korea is talking about <coughs> Korean version of, of regional cooperation. Japan is talking about the Chinese the, the Japanese version. The thing is, they rarely talk together. They rarely talk together. So, important thing, from the politics of monologue to domestic constituencies, we have to talk among ourselves, especially at the leadership level, that sometimes even a cheap talk. That kind of the facilitated communication will be a, a, a huge benefit for regional cooperation and Reconciliation, we think it, it as is an obstacle from the beginning. We have to reconcile first and, and then we can go forward for the cooperation. No, maybe not. Sequence can be reversed. In Europe, regional integration would actually provide a venue for reconciliation for France and Germany and, 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 and Germany and Poland. So start the, the active regional cooperation project, and that will lower the cost of political reconciliation. So, and we need lots of friends and support. So, this kind of political engineering, this kind of political engineering is something we cannot ignore. So, we need a success. We need a deal making. Then, let's think about moving one step further out of institution building and institutional management. So upon that note, I will stop my presentation. And just one brief note, I'm a Euro fan. So <laughs> I made a Euro fan, literally. And th this is actually a fan. <laughs> and I, I, well, actually I, 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 I'm a managing director of, of EU Center and, and, and the center made, made a, a few fans, but Actually, I didn't expect this huge group. I have 12 in, in, in my desk. <laughs> so, well, if anyone yeah, need some euro, <laughs> then, then please come to me. F priority will go to the student first, and I will discriminate the faculty members from eurozone. Okay. <laughs>